Our song reminds us of our privilege of reflecting light from God's Word. Yesterday, we received two beautiful new brochures that will help us to fulfill this weighty responsibility. Yet letting our light shine is more than a matter of speaking. It involves our actions. How so? Listen as Brother John Foster begins this morning's program with the talk, Let Your Light Shine. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Isn't it good to see the light of another day? When we stop and think about light, we have to give thanks to Jehovah God, our Creator, for providing us with light. Even in this modern age, we don't know a lot about light. It's said that it consists of energy particles, it has wave properties, but it's still not understood completely how it's distributed. But we can be so thankful to Jehovah that He provides light from the sun so that we can live here on the earth. You know that it takes the light from the sun about eight and a half minutes to get here to the earth? And one thing we do know about light, it's absolutely essential for plant life, animal life, and our life. Jesus Christ, in the Sermon on the Mount, also talked about light. If you'll turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 5, let's notice what he said about light. And we need to pay particular attention because we're involved. Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read verse 16 first of all. But please leave your Bibles open because we're going to use some more of that same chapter. Jesus said in Matthew 5.16, Likewise, let your light shine before men, that they may see your fine works, and give glory to your Father who is in the heavens. We let our light shine by the way we live. See, our fine works can bring glory to Jehovah. We also let our light shine by sharing the good news with others. So you see, in two ways we can let our light shine. By what we do and by what we say. Now Paul, when writing to the Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, Speaking about those who had accepted the truth, he said, For you were once darkness, but you're now light. Go on walking as children of light, for the fruitage of light consists of every sort of goodness and righteousness and truth. The question is, though, are we going to let our light shine? Turn back with me to Matthew chapter 5, and notice what Jesus said starting in verse 14. He said, You are the light of the world. A city cannot be hid when situated upon a mountain. People light a lamp and set it not under a measuring basket, but upon the lampstand, and it shines upon all those in the house. So we should never hide our light. We should never be ashamed of the wonderful light that has come to us that we can then pass on to others. Yet the question comes up, will people automatically glorify God if they don't know what has motivated our fine works? See, are they going to know why we do what we do? Well, let's look in now on a brother. He's in work clothes because he's at work. He's pondering the application of Matthew 5.16. You see, this scripture was discussed at a recent meeting, and now he's thinking about the application of this particular scripture. Let's listen in. I've been with this company for nearly one year now. I get along very well with my fellow workers. My boss has commended me several times for my good work. 
One co-worker even mentioned that I don't use bad language and I do not take anything from the job site. But I've never told anyone that I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Ah, I remember at Matthew 5, 14, and 15, Jesus said that we are to be the light of the world. We need to let others know why we're a good example. I really haven't handled this right. From now on, I'm going to make sure that everyone knows why I'm honest and hardworking. And you see, brothers and sisters, if we let others know that we're Jehovah's Witnesses and they commend us for our fine work, they see the fine example that we set, they're going to glorify Jehovah. See, by letting our light shine, then we can glorify Jehovah. You see, it's God's will that people of all sorts hear the truth. Paul mentioned this in the letter to Timothy in chapter 2, verse 4. All sorts of people. And this would include those with limited education. According to one estimate, about one-fifth of the world's adults, more than 780 million people cannot read and write. In addition, there's 77 million children that do not attend school and probably have little chance of learning to read. So over the years, our organization, directed by Jehovah's anointed remnant, the governing body, has produced brochures to help those with little or no formal education. For example, in 1982, we received the brochure, Enjoy Life on Earth Forever. And it was published in 177 million copies, and it was published in 362 languages. Fourteen years later, we received the booklet, What Does God Require of Us? And it was published in 370 languages with a printing of over 293 million. Then we got the brochure, You Can Be God's Friend, was released in the year 2000, and it's been produced in 315 languages and there's approval already for another 63, excuse me, another 40 languages, and already it's been published in 63 million copies. So yesterday afternoon, we received two new brochures. You may want to take out your brochures, take a look at them, start becoming familiar with them, because they're a valuable tool that Jehovah has provided us so that we can help those with little education. Like the brochures that we've had in the past, the ones that we mentioned, these have been designed to teach basic Bible truths quickly to those with limited education. You'll notice that both brochures have a lot of pictures. They're richly illustrated, and they have a minimal amount of text. The first one, Listen to God, we'll call that the simplified version. This is the one that contains the least amount of text. It was designed to help those who can't hear and those who can't read or read very little. So even small children will benefit from this particular brochure. So you parents may want to take that into consideration, helping your small children become familiar with the uh, content of the Bible by means of the pictures in this brochure. Because it contains few words, not a lot of text, then this particular brochure can be translated into many, many more languages, even for groups having very, very few publishers. If you'll notice at the bottom of the two-page spreads, generally in both brochures, there are two scriptures or more that are cited for, future, for further study. So as you uh, become familiar with these brochures, remember that the simplified one is the one you will place with the householder, 
The more complex one, listen to God and live forever, is the one that you will use as a guide in helping the householder. Now the second one, listen to God and live forever, contains a, a little bit more text to help explain some of the illustrations. So as you're talking to the person, they have theirs, you have yours, but there's additional comments, questions, and so forth that you can use in drawing them out and helping them to see exactly what Jehovah's purposes are. So we're going to uh, need to be well prepared to be effective. So why don't we look in now on a family. Uh, they've uh, gotten the new brochures and they're talking about how they're going to prepare to use these brochures in the field ministry. Now the father is going to take the lead in explaining some of these things, but let's listen in and see how they prepare and see what we can learn then about being better prepared to use these brochures in the field ministry. I really enjoyed the convention program so much. Wasn't it amazing? Jehovah always has something special for his people. Dad, I really like that new brochure. Oh, and Mom, there are so many pretty pictures. Yes, that new brochure we received, we received Friday at the convention, that is going to be another great tool to teach even more people about Jehovah. What a loving provision from Jehovah for those that may not read very well. Dad, how do you think we're going to use this in service? Well, I think it's going to be important to get familiar with it first. You know, the first thing I noticed and appreciated was how simple and straightforward the title was, Listen to God and Live Forever. And I think that idea of living forever, it's really going to catch people's interest. I'm sure we'll use the scripture too. Which one should we use? Well, let's take a look and see. Uh, on the inside here where the table of contents are, there's two listed. Let's look at the one here in Isaiah 55.3. Janessa, would you like to read that for us? Isaiah chapter 55, and we'll look at verse 3. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, and your soul will keep alive. And I shall readily conclude with you people in an indefinitely lasting covenant respecting the loving kindness to David that are faithful. Very good, thank you. You know, it would be good to highlight what it says here about inclining our ear and listening to God so that we could keep alive. And if we look down below from the scripture here at the bottom of the page, we see the table of contents. And we could look at these different topics, choose one, turn to the page in the new brochure where it's discussed, then read the scripture at the bottom of the page, and then we have these beautiful pictures we can use to help draw the person out. How does that sound? I think that's a good idea. For example, let's look at the one here on page 22. What blessings await those who listen to God? Maybe we could start by reading this scripture to the householder in Acts 24:15, And then use this beautiful illustration here to draw the householder out a little. Janessa, what is it that you like about this picture here? Well, it looks like these are all the resurrection ones coming back. I like how everybody's really excited. And look, there are even some people waving their hands trying to get the resurrected one's attention. What do you like, Mom? Hmm. Well, you know, if we look at the top of the page, it looks like those there in heaven with Jesus, they're applauding too. So everyone's going to be excited and happy about the resurrection. You know, what a blessing for those who listen to God and live forever. Are we going to use the new brochure right away? I know we should definitely carry some of these with us while we're out in service. Yeah, that's, that's right. We probably won't use it at every door, but it will be especially helpful for those who we may come in contact with who may not read very well. Well, let's practice this. Mom, would you like to be the householder? I would love to. So, friends, let's uh, take some time to become familiar with the brochures. You'll recall that Brother Schaefer yesterday afternoon mentioned that perhaps because of the simplicity of this brochure, it could become 
the most translated publication that we've had. Just imagine what a wonderful tool it will be to use in the field to help those with limited education. We're going to look in now on two publishers who are out in the field ministry, and they have the brochure with them. And uh, as they're talking to this householder, they find that she is of limited education. Let's listen in and see how they do this. And I'd like to leave this brochure or this publication with you, What Does the Bible Really Teach? And I know that you'll get a lot out of it, and it'll help you learn more about God's promise to return this earth to a paradise. Well, thank you. This looks like a really nice book. Huh. That's a lot of print in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to school and everything, but, um, well, there are a little, I had a little, well, there's still problems in my family, which not, and I, I just didn't do well in school. You know, I don't read well. I wouldn't get much out of this book, so I'm just going to let you have that back. Well, you're not alone in that situation. There are many others who don't read very much or perhaps don't even read at all. You know, our organization is interested in everybody. Uh huh. That's why I'd like to leave this brochure with you. Listen to God. It doesn't have much reading in it, but it has a lot of pictures, and it'll help you to visualize God's promise to what, what, what he promises in the Bible. This is your personal copy. I'd like to leave it with you. This, too, looks really, really nice. Like you see, there's a lot of pictures in it and whatnot. Um, thank you, ladies, very okay. much. Okay, and Doris and I'd like to come back another day for, to help you learn how to get the most out of that brochure. Would, say, Saturday be okay? Yeah, Saturdays would be good. Okay, we'll see you Saturday. Okay, thank you. Oh, Myrna, what a nice lady she was. And she was so humble to freely admit to us that she has a reading problem. Yes, she was. And, you know, I think this brochure is going to really be a big help to her. Not only to her, but others who perhaps don't read much either, or maybe don't read at all. And even small children will get a lot out of it. I agree with you. And, but I'm wondering, how are you going to start the call when we make the return visit? Well, I was thinking by using the brochure, if you turn to the first two pages, you'll notice this beautiful big picture. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of having her look at that picture and then asking her, what does she really see that really appeals to her? I think that's a good idea because questions immediately get her involved and get her thinking, and it helps us to understand what she's thinking and what she likes. And then this second brochure, Listening to God and Live Forever, with, it goes into more detail for us so that we can have more questions for her, and it will help us to expand on the pictures and teach her. That's a good idea. And you notice there's two scriptures that are mentioned in this brochure on these two pages, and I was thinking that instead of just quoting them to her, perhaps we could read them to her from her own Bible if she has one. That way she'll know that the information comes from the Bible, not just the brochure. You know, because she's, uh, we're using two brochures in tandem, something we haven't done before, I think it might be a really good idea if we get together ahead of time and practice what we're going to say so we'll be prepared. Uh, are you doing anything this Wednesday? Wednesday would be great. I think that using these brochures in the service is going to help us to make our light shine like Jesus said we should. You know, Doris, I'm really looking forward to going back on Saturday. I am, too. So then, brothers and sisters, let's become very familiar with these brochures and make good use of them. Now, does that mean that uh, studying one of these brochures is going to qualify a person for baptism? No, not by itself. However, these brochures can help many, many more people become acquainted with our great God and His beloved Son, Jesus. So we need to let our light shine so that, as Paul said to, in the letter to Timothy, all men might believe and exercise faith in Jesus. 
Because after all, Jesus, according to John 1, 6 through 9, is the true light that gives light to every sort of man. So we can thank Jehovah for the light from the sun. We can thank Jehovah for the light that he has given us that we then can give to others. So let's be diligent, brothers and sisters. Let your light shine. We appreciated that instructive and motivating presentation.